Hi, this is Kevin Jones from Pluralsight, and this is the Java API for WebSockets class. In this chapter, we're going to do an introduction to WebSockets. We're going to take a look very briefly at what the Java API for WebSockets is, and we'll also take a look very briefly at the code we'll be building during the rest of the class. So what are WebSockets? WebSockets allow for full duplex communication between browser and server. What that means is that as well as the browser sending the server data, the server can also send the browser data. Unlike with traditional HTTP, where the browser sends a request to the server to grab the data, the server has no way in that scenario to send data directly to the browser. WebSockets are supported in modern servers and in modern browsers. So IE 10, Chrome, Firefox, uh, IIS 8 and above, Apache, all support WebSockets. The way it works, so we have a client and a server, and the client and the server perform a WebSocket handshake. Once the handshake has been performed and both sides are happy that they can communicate over WebSockets, we can then send data two ways. So the client can send data to the server and the server can send data to the client. At some point, one side or other can decide that they want to end the communication. When that, when that happens, one side closes the communication and the other, the other side of the connection receives an event which tells them the connection's been closed and they can, they can then tidy up behind themselves. The Java API for WebSockets, this is part of JEE since version seven. This is an API that lets us create a, a WebSocket server. So we can run codes like this inside, for example, Tomcat or Jetty or any sort of standard Java JEE server. It allows us to create what's called an endpoint. And we can create that endpoint in one of two ways. We can create the endpoint programmatically, or we can use an API to create the endpoint, or we can use Java annotations to create the endpoint. The API allows us to send both text and binary data. It also allows us to use Java types in the server and convert those Java types into, say, JSON that we can send to the client. And then any JSON we receive back from the client, we can convert back to Java types within the server. And that makes writing code for the API for WebSockets very, very easy. We simply use the built-in Java types. It also supports something called URI templates, which allow us to configure the URIs the server can receive and then change the routing of those requests depending on the incoming URI. So to see how to use WebSockets, we'll build a demo application. And the demo we build will be a chat application. Whenever you see WebSockets demos, you tend to see chat applications as the demonstration. The reason for that is the chat applications allow us to show fairly simply all the features of WebSockets. And rather than break with tradition, that's what we'll do here. 